Welcome to City Services Monthly. I'm your host, Donnie Turlington. This month, we're going to talk a little bit about workforce development and about all the wonderful things that the workforce development team in Guilford County and Greensboro are doing. And I'm joined by Jeff Frederick, who is the chair of the Workforce Development Board, and Lillian Plummer, who is the director of the Workforce Development Board. Thank you both for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. As we, as we talk about and throw out this term workforce development, let's go ahead and define it up front for our, for our viewers. And, and Jeff, I'll let you take the first stab, but, but when, we, when we talk about workforce development and, and specifically with the Workforce Development Board, what is it and, and what is it that the Workforce Development Board does? Um, I like to think of workforce development uh, from a number of different perspectives. One is um, the constituents, the citizens that we serve, um, part of the workforce development mission is to serve those folks that are um, not employed or underemployed, um, to help those folks um, find employment, meaningful employment uh, that they can use uh, to sustain their families and their day-to-day -day lives. Uh, secondly, uh, workforce development uh, is part of an economic development initiative in that uh, certainly, as you help folks find meaningful employment and earn better wages, earn wages, period, um, that's an impact to the overall economy. Uh, but secondly, um, employers uh, who are out there seeking workers or employers that are interested in developing a workforce to meet their needs um, for their future or at present, um, part of the Workforce Development Board mission uh, is to help those employers with services to uh, either develop that workforce or find that workforce and a number of other different things that we do to provide services for the employer and then we roll it all up and uh, it all impacts the community overall uh, in terms of providing a comprehensive service relative to folks looking and seeking for employment and folks providing uh, employment opportunities uh, to create a system uh, that evolves over time meets the needs of each one of the participants um, to grow our economy. Sure. And where Jeff represents the board, Lillian, you represent the staff and the team that really implements those services. Yes. So talk a little bit about, about what your folks do. Okay. We are part of the Office of Workforce Development. We're the division, a division of the city manager's office. And our responsibility is primarily to make sure that the policies and the plans of the board are carried out. Second, to make sure that under the guidelines of the federal law that we work with, that we're meeting the requirements and that we're providing quality services for job seekers and for employers. So our job is to take the plans, implement, and make sure that the plans are being implemented as, as they were put together and that we're in compliance. And Jeff, I'll, I'll pose this question to you because I, I heard you talk about it uh, as part of your answer to what workforce development does. But a lot of folks focus on workforce development being a, how do you help me get a job? Sometimes that starts though with the employers. So talk a little bit about some of the work that workforce development does with, with the employers in town. Maybe, maybe in, in a twofold response might be, um, how do you work with existing employers? And then I know you all do some, some work with employers who are looking to expand into our area. Um, first, let me start by um, employers are pivotal uh, to the work that we do um, relative to the Workforce Development Board. Um, one of our highest aims is to make sure that employers have what they need, right? Uh, because if they're there and they're thriving and they're healthy, then they're providing opportunities which in turn lead to um, hoping those folks that are looking for opportunities find those opportunities. So a good number of the services that the Workforce Development uh, Board provides uh, for employers is helping employers understand, better understand what their needs are, um, helping employers quantify and qualify um, the types of roles uh, and work that they have so that we can better serve those folks that are looking uh, for those roles. Um, to make sure that we have as close of a match as, as possible. Um, and in the end, um, if, if the workforce board staff uh, are doing all of the things that they do so well, then that employer um, has a role, has work that is very uh, succinctly characterized um, in a manner such that those folks that are flowing into and out of our services 
um, are, are matched up to those roles um, and the employer you know, have their needs satisfied as well as the folks that are seeking work have their needs satisfied. So one hand in turn washes the other. Sure. And, and Lillian, I guess from a, a functional standpoint, the way that works is that um, one of the bi these businesses that, that Jeff alluded to potentially could call and say, hey, we need a couple hundred people who have advanced manufacturing skills for mm -hmm. something that we're trying to, to, um, to, to put together. Um, can you help us out? We, we can't find these folks or, hey, we know we've got them, but we just need them to know about our job. So talk functionally about what your staff does to, to help connect those employers with the right people. Okay. And we very often get those calls. And Either I take it that's a good call to get. It's, when it's you a very good call. call. Sometimes we get them through the economic developers. Sometimes we get them from employers that we've worked with in the past. Sometimes from the newspaper for Head Start. Sure. But when we get that call, one of the first things we do is make a connection with that employer and sit down with that employer to deal with what skills they're really looking for. One of the things that we see very often in the paper we've heard in the news for the last year is we have a skill gap in Guilford County. Very often that skill gap is a matter of the right hand talking in a language that the left hand understands. Sometimes it's not a skill gap, sometimes it's not a it's the system not looking for the right people because we haven't defined the skills the same way. Right. So we sit down and we go through that process and we design, customize with that employer ways of, re of recruiting, of screening, and of assessing individuals that they're looking for. In addition to that, we bring to the table the community college, our other trainers, our other partners because when we're recruiting for a company when we're preparing workers for a company, then all of the partners have to be a part of that puzzle. We bring together all of the players, and then we define what training we may have as a prerequisite to referring people, what kind of assessment we're going to do, what kind of skills we're going to do. And then we do recruitment, very often from word of mouth, but we're finding as the economy is improving that we're looking at some other kind of recruitment right. initiatives. So it's a matter of understanding the skills, assessing the applicants that are available, making sure that if they had the skills, we make appropriate referrals. If they don't, then we develop ways to help them build those skills. Gotcha. So let's take it a step further. Let's say that now that process with the employer has, has come full circle, you're ready to start recruiting and I open up the news and record one day and I see a, a job placement ad and it says, come to one of our career centers. Yes. Talk about the career center itself that are located throughout Guilford County and in Green, there's one in Greensboro. And, yes. and what happens to me if I walk in off the street and I say, I've got the aptitude to do these things, but I need to develop my skills, but I wanna get one of those jobs. Okay. First of all, let me define the career centers. Yes. The career centers in Guilford County are part of the NC Works Career Center system. People who have followed our system know that we've had other names including being a job link center. Right. So if you look if you go to one of our locations now, then you will see that the job link sign is down and the NC Works sign is up. The career centers is a single location or multiple locations where multiple partners come together work in the same place. We have training that takes place in the center. We have other partners that come in and recruit and, and refer their customers. So it is truly designed to be a one stop where a, a person can come in and access multiple services and multiple resources. So if I am a job seeker, I see that ad that is in the paper and I go to a career center, the first thing that happens is I get registered and I get registered in the NC Work system. And that's important because not only can the staff access that system when we're trying to recruit for a company, but companies access that system every day. They put their jobs in and they go in and they do the, the match. So if you're looking for a welder for your company, then you can go into NC Works and do the match and if Jeff is a welder and his information is in and is in thoroughly, then he may be a referral to you immediately right. and you may have your hire. So it's kind of like it's got Jeff's resume, online resume on there, That's but right. it's more like his skills and what he's got certifications in. That's and that right. Kind of thing. And, and your I'm job employer, order. Right. So I, yes. I go in and I, 
It's almost like a match.com, only it's for exactly employers and employees. Is. That's what it is. That's great. We don't do the speed dating. No, that's okay. Match, that's okay. The match.com idea. So once you come in and you get registered, then you are assigned to a career development staff who help you walk through where you are, what kind of skills you have, what kind of work history you have, but just as important, what kind of work you're looking for you would like to do. And once that takes place, then you are screened for that employer, if that is your interest, or you're referred to other employers or to training opportunities, just based on where you are and what you have to bring to the table. And that process goes on constantly in the career centers so that individuals can come in, they can get assistance, but they can also come in and go into the job bank and search for jobs themselves and use the resources, send a resume if they see a, a job opening. I was going to say the times that I've been in the career centers, there's always a little bit of a buzz. There's always folks kind of walking around and checking out the computers and looking up. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess I've never really asked the question of what are they looking at, but maybe they're putting in their information yes. or they're seeing what's on the online system. They're doing that. They're putting in their information. They're seeing what training opportunities are available and they're looking for things that may be of interest with them and then they work with the staff to see if they're a good fit. Well, I'm going to ask you both to hold your thoughts now. We're going to take a quick break and when we come back we'll talk a little bit more about some of the economic development efforts around workforce development. Sure thing. We'll be back City Services Monthly in just a minute. Welcome back to City Services Monthly. Jeff Frederick, who is the chair of the Workforce Development Board, and Lillian Plummer, the director of Workforce Development Board, thank you again for taking time to speak to us about workforce development. And when we left off, um, we were talking about the, the, the role that, that your staff plays, whether it's through the Career Center or some of the other mm -hmm. services that are provided. Um, and one thing that, that you and I have talked a lot about and that we've kind of realized over time is the important role the community colleges in, in the, the, the colleges in general, but specifically maybe GTCC plays with workforce development and some of the, you mentioned before, some of the training opportunities that might exist through workforce development. So talk a little bit about the relationship between the Workforce Development Board and, and the community college. One of the things that we've recognized and is very crucial at this particular point is that individuals who have the higher tech critical skills that employers are looking for, in most cases, are working. So part of what we've got to do and we've got to be diligent about is adding more skilled workers into the pipeline. In order to do that, we have to have a strong relationship with the community college, with the universities, with anyone that is providing training because if we start at the, at the table with employers and employers say, here are the skills we need, then we've got to build the capacity to make sure that individuals can get that training. So we work very closely with the college. We work very closely with a and with UNCG to talk about the programs they have that meet the needs of existing employers. And then one of the things our system does for job seekers is we make scholarships available if there is a training program that they would like to participate in. We'll assist with some other things such as child care, um, transportation, but the big thing that we do is make scholarships available for folks to get training Excellent. and learn skills. And we do that with all of the trainers with lots of input from employers because the best training programs are those that employers have signed off on because once they've signed off then that is tantamount to a commitment to sure. consider and to hire and that's bottom line of where we're trying to go. Sure. Jeff, I'm going to shift gears a little bit with my next question to you, but um, one of the things is I've had the opportunity over the last year or two to talk to our elected officials and to other folks that are involved in economic development here in, in the Greensboro community is uh, I, I will often ask the question that if you're one of the folks that is sitting in the boardroom trying to recruit a business to come to, to Greensboro, what are one of the things that you say or what's what's your sales pitch about Greensboro 
inevitably workforce development is always one of the two or three bullet points that's mentioned among that, that group, which has to make you all feel good because it's one of the things that's top of, top of mind for them. Um, but talk specifically about that economic development component and the role that workforce development plays in this community and, and how you may feed into some of the work that maybe Brent Christensen and the, the Greensboro Partnership does or what some of the other economic development drivers do here in our community. Certainly, um, you know, economic development, as we all know, uh, from a community perspective, from a Guilford County perspective, it's a courtship. Um, and so when you have those entities, those organizations that are looking to this area um, to perhaps bring their organization, um, as part of that courtship, they're going to want to know, can you provide me with all the resources that I may need to sustain my business? And one of those huge pieces would be, you know, can you help me with staffing my organization? Not only can you help me with staffing my organization, can you staff it with uh, people that have all the critical skills uh, that are required for them to be successful? Um, so having a very strong, diligent uh, workforce development uh, effort uh, means that they will have that staffing, um, they will have those resources, that infrastructure in place to make sure that um, that organization or organizations uh, have that pipeline of workers that they need, uh, not only uh, for the introduction, but as they grow their, their business in, in our area. And I would take it that the, the best world possible is the world where if I own a business and I want to move it into a particular part of the country that that workforce is already there trained and ready and ready for me when I get there. Uh, obviously that's probably an ideal situation that maybe doesn't happen everywhere but I gotta believe that the second best component is if the if the workforce isn't trained and ready yet there's a workforce development board that's there that's ready to help me work through that process and get everybody up and running. So is that is that part of the sales pitch? Absolutely. It's it's having that workforce development board, um, those folks leading that effort, uh, those programs in a way that is extremely sensitive uh, to what employers in the area may need. Um, and not only, you know, not often, well, I should say, uh, you know, sometimes a community, uh, an organization or, or a group of folks may not have what they need at the time. Um, but it's comforting to know to organizations that you have the infrastructure in place to build it and build it very quickly. So one of the other uh, characteristics that we want our board to have is to always be nimble and adaptable um, and to be able to do that very quickly um, so that we can respond to the needs um, of those folks that are interested in the area, those folks that are already here and interested in growing and staying in the area. Um, you know, that's that's one of the things that we're always attuned to and I, make sure we're adjusting. I got to believe the, the goal for you all is to see how fast we can get to yes when they say we need your help and, and we're trying to figure out a way how quickly can we say yes we can help you and do those things. Absolutely. We're, we're positively anxious um, all the time to make sure that we've got that early seat at the table when we're having economic development discussions. We want all the players and the stakeholders to know and understand, um, here's what we have to offer. Uh, here's what the community looks like. Um, here's how we can adjust to whatever need you may have. Um, let us know what you may need. Um, we're anxious to do it for you because if you're successful, we're successful. And if we're successful as a workforce development board, then certainly the citizens of Guilford County are successful as well because there are ample opportunities for them to um, you know, start, build, and grow careers. Uh, that, that they need uh, Truly to be economically beneficial. viable, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But one of the things I would add to that is we've built a very strong working relationship with the economic development entities both here in Greensboro and in High Point. And one of the things that we do is we begin those discussions as early as they're in the courting stages of organizations. Right. So it builds us lead time if a company that is even considering can identify and say, here are the kind of workers we need, then we can turn on the, at that infrastructure that Jeff was talking about and begin that process of identifying the skills and individuals and building that pool for, right. for that company. And one of the other things that um, 
our, our viewers watching may not realize is that uh, unfortunately in in our economy we still do from time to time hear about employers who are downsizing yes um, but often you all are at the table there as well with the employers who let you know that you know unfortunately our business model has changed and we're going to have to let some folks go a lot of times you all are there helping work with those employees or that employer to help placement and find other opportunities. We're the lead agency for dislocations in Guilford County. So that when, this, when a company sends a warn notice to the state, the state will come in and meet with that company and we will join them. The state will do their official act and turn it over to us and we will work with the company from that point point forward. And that's never a fun time, I'm no. sure, but it, no. it creates another opportunity for yes. you all to work with those folks and hopefully for those employees that are impacted, it creates an opportunity for them too. Absolutely. It is a much better situation for an individual to be able to step out of a job, unfortunately, if they lose it, and step into another one if that process starts if, while they're still connected to an employer. Sure. The other thing is if companies are looking for particular individuals, and we know a company's about to lay off that kind of skill set, then we can do job fairs and make the connection with companies that are looking, and that very often helps individuals to move from one job to another. William, my last question is for any of our folks at home that are watching this throughout the month of October, are there any opportunities for them if they say, hey, I really want to find a connection or find my next career? Uh, is there any anything that they can do by coming into one of the career centers or by checking out the website? Absolutely. One of the things that we are doing, we'll be doing uh, in October is solidifying and increasing our recruitment for individuals that are interested in advanced manufacturing, aviation, and logistics, particularly advanced manufacturing because it's so broad. We have a lot of skill set areas, trade areas that individuals could go directly to work if they have any experience and just because you haven't worked in a job as a painter if you've painted your house two or three times you may have a skill set that we can turn into sure. a viable skill so it's important for people to come in and talk with us and tell us what they're interested in and let us start working with them and i, I assume be open-minded absolutely right. absolutely we have a number of assessments and things that we can do to help individuals to make the make their decisions. One of the things that we say to our customers is when you walk through the door, if you have a dream, if we can decide on what that dream is and what that vision is, we can help you figure out how to get there. Sounds great. Sounds great. Well, Lily and Jeff, thank you both for your time and we really appreciate everything that you're doing for our community through workforce development. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the time we have for this month's edition of City Services Monthly, but be sure to tune in to Greensboro Television Network, and we'll see you again next month.